Church are happy to present the Marionette Christmas presentation of Medicine Act Church of God. The children have been rehearsing for the last two months, getting ready for their parts, memorizing lines, learning uh, different songs to sing, and so we're excited to present all that hard work for you tonight. Just a couple of notes. Again, we're so thankful for all of our volunteers who helped out with costumes and set design. Thank you, parents, for letting your children participate and bringing them to rehearsals, we sure appreciate that and hope you enjoy what you see tonight. Just a disclaimer, uh, again, our costumes, I, I'm so thankful for all the volunteers who put the costumes together. Our toy soldier, you can tell, looks amazing. Um, the gun there is completely fake, so we just want to let you know that it's a, from our toy soldier, it's a toy gun. <laughs> all right, feel free to laugh. Feel free to clap, and there'll be a part where, yes, you can feel free to sing. But with that, if you could put your hands together, we're proud to present the marionette. Surely I would find the way, surely find the way. 
the state of your heart is one warning and you need attention, perhaps more of well, extra or need everyone get in positions. My attention to detect the approach of the storekeeper. Ah, uh, Christmas. Another day, another dollar. <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, could you assist me with something, please? Yes, absolutely. I have a list here of my grandchildren and their ages, and I was wondering if you could maybe point me in the direction of toys that seem to be popular this year for those ages. Yes. Do you do this every year? Well, no. This is the first time I've done it this way, actually. Usually I buy my grandchildren <laughs> socks and other practical things I think they need, but last year after the presents were all opened and the grandkids were off to another, I overheard them complaining about how Grandma always gives gifts that are no fun. I guess I just want to do things a bit differently this year. Excuse me, I could have had an overhear conversation just now. You want to buy your grandchildren the best gifts of the season because they complained last year? Really? Well, my price range won't get them the best gifts of the season, but I do want to get them something fun. Mine wouldn't be getting anything fun for me if this was the case. Mine left behind my back and made a crack in the them one year, and that was the last gift they will ever see. The last gift. Really? The ungrateful little. I mean, your grandchildren, they shouldn't be getting anything. I could not do that. Besides, it's Christmas. Yeah, exactly, it's Christmas. Haven't you heard? He's making a list, he's checking it twice, he's gonna find out who's not your nice. Santa Claus himself would agree with me. Well, I see what you're saying, but Santa Claus has never been a big part of my Christmas. What? Okay, now you really have me confused. Why is it so important to buy your grandchildren any gifts at all if Santa's not a big part of your Christmas? Well, Christmas has always been more about the birth of Jesus Christ to me, and that's what I celebrate. Jesus was God's gift to all people, and the criteria wasn't, you better watch out, you better not pout, you better not cry, and telling you why. It's actually the complete opposite. Okay, you're rooting me out now. <laughs> Sorry about that. It maybe doesn't make a lot of sense the way I'm explaining it. <sighs> My grandkids maybe weren't very grateful, but then again, I wasn't really studying them and trying to get them a gift that meant a lot to them. I don't blame them for that. And even if they are at fault. I love my grandkids terribly, and I want to get them a gift whether they deserve it or not. God's that way with me. He's given me so much, and it certainly is not because I deserve it. It really is a different way of looking at Christmas. Different from the norm. So, how old are your grandchildren? I'll just be over here if you need me. Oh, sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> so, how old are your grandchildren? Oh, uh, they're all grown children of their own. Oh, so that's why you're here now. You're buying gifts for your great-grandchildren? Oh, not at all. I never see the great-grandchildren. Everyone's too busy. No, I'm just here because I like to look. The store is very interesting to me. There's none another like it. You see how they have all the old-fashioned toys and not the new-fangled ones? I like looking at those. They remind me of when I was young. The rare ones are especially interesting to me. I feel like I have a connection with the one over there. It's like... We're living in the same world. I better go. I can't get way too much of your time. Oh, no, no. I have lots of time. And thanks for chatting. It was really nice meeting you. Well, I, I gotta go find the storekeeper. He still has my list. I am really gonna go to the bowl You seem like a nice lady. And you're gonna get hurt when they don't appreciate all you've done. Really, take my advice. I know. Well, thank you for your concern, but... I'm not giving just so they love me more, and I'm not giving to get something in return. I'm giving just because I love them so much. You'll see if the tide comes. Well, I don't want to hurt you out again, but honestly, that is the way I feel. You know, I used to be like that Mary Never the one you mentioned earlier. I was at the whim of other people, and I had strings attached to me that were dependent on the actions of others. The marionette can only do what others around her want her to do, and she's not free. If I give, if only if others give, and if I love, if only if others love, how am I any different than her? When I experienced God's unconditional love, those strings were completely cut. I get what I need from his love for me, and his love is always there. I'm looking only to him to fill me, not to anyone else. So I can love freely, no conditions attached. Of course, if my grandchildren don't appreciate these gifts I'm getting them this year, it will be sad. It will hurt for a while, but it won't have any effect on my love for them. <laughs> my grandchildren, they are the best, and I don't foresee any of that happening. 
But if it does, I have a source of love not my I don't get that, but it does sound freeing. It is. I better go now. It was nice meeting you. Oh, same here. You take care, okay?
you needing these scissors. Christmas just Bethlehem and baby juice and the shepherd's time. Bah humbug. Sure it's a great story. If you like stories, ha 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 ha. <laughs> stories, stories, give me the facts. Nothing like a little display to keep people in line. Speaking of blind, <coughs> did you hear the one about Jack? Let's do all of you joking. Come on, let's talk about Christmas. Just think, God sent his only son, Jesus, to be born in the the one who created the whole world. All true. What do you think, Bowerina? I do believe, yes, but that can't help me. <laughs> now, where is that storekeeper? He still my list. Oh, come on, baby. 
we get another round of applause, please, for the I just want to take this moment right now to invite our senior pastor, Pastor Glenn Dewitt, to come up here on stage with me and just share a few words. Here's Pastor Glenn Dewitt. faces here today. It is great that y'all came, parents, grandpas and grandmas and, and cousins, uncles and aunts and friends. Just so good to have you here today. And uh, this has been just a, an amazing production. Pastor Scott, that's just really great. Would you give a, a hand to Pastor Scott? I was thinking about Christmas and just how crazy it is that Christmas falls in the middle of winter. I know our winters aren't quite like some other winters. This afternoon I took just a, a few minutes. I was watching a football game with about almost a foot of snow up the field. And I thought, you know, we got it pretty good here. But isn't it a, kind of a strange time of year to have Christmas? You'd think it could be maybe in the summer or the spring or something else. But here it is in the dead of winter. And uh, there's people that are, you know, going to college and they just finished the exam. They're rushing out of their classroom waiting for a break, and then they, they come out of their classroom, they've done their last exam, and all of a sudden they think, oh man, I still haven't bought any gifts. And i got to go to Grandma's house for Christmas, you know, and i got to travel, and, and they're not sure how they're going to get there. It's kind of a, a crazy time to have Christmas, isn't it? I was thinking about that, and then I, I thought, well, for the businessman, it isn't much better. You know, they get right after Christmas comes January 1st, and after January 1st comes what? Taxes. <laughs> the tax man call us, and it's everybody's turn to pay taxes. Well, I was reading the Christmas story the other day from Luke chapter 1, and I found out that there, we aren't so much different from what happened back then, because as I was reading, it said in the days of Quirinus, the governor, governor of Syria, that he called all of the people of the land to come and to pay taxes and take his census. I thought, yeah, that's just about the way it would be, wouldn't it? And uh, so, but the thing about it is, is that what seemed to be the most inconvenient time, uh, as I read through the scripture, it talked about Mary and Joseph. And here's Mary that is uh, ready to deliver her first baby. And Joseph, who's not the dad, the Bible tells us that this baby is, is conceived of a Holy Spirit. But here's Joseph. They're heading down to Bethlehem. It's a long journey. And she's nine months pregnant, and they get there, and if you can believe it or not, you probably can in the middle of the winter in a big storm, you probably figure this would happen in Canada, but there it was, the inns were all full. And they ended up in the barn and had delivery of that baby in a manger. So it seems like maybe that's not quite the right time to have Christmas either, right? But when you really think about it, and you think about what really happened, according to John 3, 16, that God loved us so much that he sent his son to the world so that we could receive everlasting life. And when we realize that it isn't all about the, the nervousness and the awkwardness and the busy, busy of going to the stores and getting all the packages and rushing through to December 25th, when you get to that day, I don't know how it is at your home, but we just try to sit back and enjoy the moment. And this isn't about all the kids just tearing their presents open. That happens. So how do you find that peace and joy that the Bible talks about through Jesus? How do you find that freedom that is there that the, the play was all about, that the marionette was free? And we know that Jesus said that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. I was uh, pastoring in Brooks. And in one year, there was a man there that was at the Christmas program, similar to tonight, and he had never prayed that prayer to receive Jesus Christ into his heart. He was about 80 years old, never prayed a prayer. And that night, somehow God got a hold of his heart, 
and he saw something beyond the hustle and bustle of Christmas, and he made a prayer right there, and he says, God, would you come and live in my heart? Changed his life. I've heard lately, uh, later on, that he was baptized. He's still serving God today, and uh, it's a wonderful thing when someone finds the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. At our house, on Christmas Day, before we even look at the presents, and I love having the kids there and the grandkids there, and they're tearing open the presents, and they're looking up with their great smiles and says, oh, thank you, thank you. It's a beautiful time. But even before we do that, we take God's Word, we open up the Bible, and we take the Christmas story and we'll read it. The, uh, the uh, babies are on the mom's laps, the toddlers are there sitting for a couple minutes just in a, in a quiet time of reflection of what it really means for Christmas and then we experience plenty of prayer thanking God that he did send his son for us. You know, if that's true, what Jesus said, he who the son sets free is free indeed, then that is an opportunity for every one of us to receive the life of Jesus. And I don't know, even beyond the gifts, and you know, I just forget about all the job, I forget all, all about what happened before that, because that moment is special. But beyond that, I like to take time at Christmas. Sometimes it's just being off by myself and just spend some time thanking the Lord for what He's done in my life. I could, have, I could be anywhere in this world. I could be having all kinds of tragedy happen to me, but I'm thankful for what God's done for me spiritually and in every other way. And sometimes in those quiet moments, whether it be on a hilltop or whether it be in just some corner of the house, wherever it might be, I just take that time and say, God, I want to thank you for Jesus Christ. And that's really when we find out that, you know, maybe Christmas seems to be at the wrong time of the year, but really it's smack right at the best time of the year because when we need it most, Jesus is always there, right? So I'd like to say a word of prayer tonight, if that'd be okay, Pastor Scott. And uh, if there's anybody here, maybe like that gentleman I was saying that prayed that prayer to receive Christ, this could be a momentous day for somebody right here in this room. So Father, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, for the life that you promised us. We know, Lord, that Christmas time is more, more than about the hustle and bustle and, and about all of the things that they seem to go bad at Christmas. But, but Lord, it's a good time. We know that you came to bring us life, life everlasting. You came to set us free from all of the sin that we had. You set us free from all of the worries and troubles. And God, we can come to you in the midst of all of that and say, Lord, would you come and would you minister to us? So we just pray for every family that's here. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that's here that's brought their kids to Kids Club and Edge and Sunday School throughout the year. God, we bless them. We pray, Father, that this Christmas would be special because you are special. And we ask, God, that each one will reach out to you and receive you into their heart, their life, their family, and their home. We pray in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Okay, back up here. Now, this is the part I know you've been waiting for. Downstairs, we have got goodies. We have treats. We have desserts. We have, I'm sure, some sweet chocolate things. Oh, but before I do that, there is one thing more. One thing more. Come on in. We got a grouch downstairs and took all the cookies away. So uh, we would like uh, Pastor Glenn and Paulina. Janetta, please come over here.